courage, and kindness, strength, and gentleness, fortitude, and tenderness, a father, a leader, and a lifelong teacher, a comforter, and a patient listener, a hero, and a world changer, a gift from God above. Being a father is a high and holy calling. It is not only a blessing, but also a stewardship. Fatherhood is a precious opportunity and a divine responsibility because it is one of the many ways that God watches over all of us. A father is a protector and a provider, a hard worker and a family man, a role model and a faithful friend. And so from all of us to all of you, thank you to the fathers. Being a kingdom man to me means quite a few things. Um, I think it, overall though, I think it's another level of consciousness. And I don't mean your, you know, grand rising king type of consciousness. It's more so um, being a part of a kingdom is being part of a larger system, a government that's um, almost intangible. You can't see it. You don't, you know, you don't go to the kingdom of God office, you know what I mean? Like maybe our churches should be that, but it, it's an intangible thing. So you have to have a conscience that you're part of a larger system and know that you play a role in that. Um, so for me, being a kingdom man is knowing um, that everything that you do, everything that you say should be to advance the kingdom of God. How do we push the kingdom forward? Is that uh, in the way I communicate with my coworkers? Is that in the way that I raise my family, the way that I love my wife, the way that I treat my, my, you know, my friends, all of those things, are they reflective of the kingdom? Does it push it forward? Does it um, highlight the values and the principles of the kingdom of God? Or you know, does it do the opposite? So a kingdom man is always conscious of um, their actions, their thoughts. Um, and how it reflects to others. How does being a father impact the kingdom of God? Well, for me, a more relevant question for me to answer would be how has the kingdom of God invaded my experience as being a father? So how has the kingdom of God invaded my fatherhood? My, my, my attempts to be a godly father, my, my, my walk in being a godly father. I think of the scripture of Isaiah 64, when he says, um, since, the begin since the time began, ear has not heard, nor eye have seen a God like you, a God who serves those that wait on him. Now, when I put that together, um, where I'm going with that is being a father and, and, and extolling your love, your sacrifice upon a child, um, trying to protect them, and being a finite earthly father and, and their love, and then seeing the miscommunication there may be when a child uh, resents the environment you may be trying, or it's just not totally understanding the love you're bestowing on them at all times and at what lengths it is because they want to be their own person. And so in that, you think of the infinite God who uh, eyes have not seen, ears haven't heard, you know, um, the love that he has toward them, who, that he has for them that love him. And, you know, so, you know, you, 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 you get frustrated in life sometimes, you know, and there's joys too, but you think of how they come hell to the frustration that you offer to God who has love or the times you doubt God and um, yet he still loves you more and then he invades your world and still holds you and caress you just like he would your child 
And for me, um, it's really shown me, and I'm, I'm so grateful for the, 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 the opportunity, the gifts of parenting, uh, because it really showed me my, uh, the great love that God has for me, which in turn, I pray, continues to work patience as I deal with my children, continues to uh, have no guile and no, you know, that my love is for them and not that I'm reaping rewards. I mean, there's always rewards in God, you know, but they're not the final rewards, understanding my position as a kingdom man of God and a father. And hopefully in the end, the Lord will tell me uh, good and well done, my faithful servant in that aspect and, and in other aspects. And um, then I'll know the, the true impact. The father being the overseer and also the help and the aid to the family, um, both uh, natural family as well as a broader uh, church uh, family as we see it within the body of Christ. So not just speaking generally to one's uh, particular ministry in regards to the church or their church, but more broadly uh, looking at a universal kingdom which is expanded out to all of the earth. So the highest honor that God's placed on man is calling him father. Um, reason being is because that's how God, our father, identifies himself. Um, so I look at that in a lot of different ways, but essentially God being our source and we're being us being his resources as children. So he's put things in us um, that I believe is our duty as men, um, fathers, to put out into the world, not just for our natural offspring, but also for, you know, our spiritual children as well. Being diligent with an intended purpose of fulfilling those mission goals, um, whatever those may be, uh, which we all know are many. Uh, but as a kingdom man, taking on that general responsibility and being consistent with it. And there's a lot of different fashions. Um, there's a lot of studies out there talking about what a kingdom man looks like. Um, but I want to specifically speak to, um, in my opinion, I believe a kingdom man is someone who consistently makes an effort to operate under the governance of Jesus Christ. Um, they walk out the, you know, their lifestyle and their um, everyday movements just lines up with the Word of God um, in a way that speaks to leadership, it speaks to the integrity, um, and just speaks to, you know, overall um, just saying yes, choosing God daily. Kingdom man. Um, as I consider that question, I think of first Psalm 65, uh, 63, and then verse, and also Psalms 25. Um, but for the essence of time in an interview, I'll try to put that into my own words. Having heard the gospel, um, understood the truth of the gospel, and believing that gospel, I find it to be in response to that gospel, living out, uh, as Jesus spoke in John 3, um, you one must be born again, first of all. And so as a kingdom man, you must be born again. And then allowing God to craft you in such a way by his word and his path. And therefore, after he's taught you his way, then guiding you and living a life that exemplifies that making pursuing the new man, as Paul would say. And um, oftentimes I find with the many books and the volumes that's written on the subject, you have to be very careful of the stumbling blocks because a lot of times, in short, that's why I'm willing to be verbose as my son, 
introduced to me at one point. Uh, I'm willing to be verbose because I've often find that the stumbling block of that is you have to always be conscious of the new man as opposed to the, the old man. Because a lot of times our simple verbiage has a tendency to stoke the same desires that you still had as that old man. And you just want, it becomes a means to an end. So being that kingdom man is walking in integrity to actually just the new birth and your need for a savior. Being a father impacts the kingdom of God because now as a father, I have a, um, a more physical way to advance the kingdom. Like I get to create more kingdom citizens. And what I mean by that is like, they have to make the choice to love God and to be saved you know, once they come of age. Um, but right now it's my responsibility to pour as much into them as I can so that they will want to be a kingdom citizen, show them what a kingdom citizen is, so that they're living this life and, you know, they don't even know, you know, that this is who any, of course they'll know who they, you know, what it is later on, but um, just making that the culture. So being a father impacts the kingdom because I get to physically expand the kingdom as creating, I've got two and a half more kingdom citizens now because I'm a father. Um, and so it's important to perpetuate the principles of the kingdom through my children. Since being a father, I think about everything that I do because I want it to be a good example and I want it, um, I don't ever want to be a deterrent to their salvation. I don't ever want to, I know people who are like, you know, my dad was like this or my dad was like that, so I'm never going to church. I'm never, and that's not going to be me. And so um, being a father has definitely pushed me to want to um, just display those principles more, you know, on a natural sense, but also on a spiritual sense, just making sure that, you know, they have a good example. I wish it, I had a better answer of like, oh, I want to be the best me that I could be for me. Now I really want to be, you know, dope for my kids. And that's really been the motivation behind it. And, you know, me being better for it is just kind of being a byproduct, honestly. Thanks for tuning in to our online service. I want to talk to those of you who were watching, but you have yet to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. The Bible says in Romans 10, um, chapter 10, verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. If you have not received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to repeat uh, this prayer with me. Say, Father, forgive me for my sins. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. And right now, I accept you, Jesus Christ, as my Lord and Savior. If you said that prayer, welcome. Welcome into the kingdom. Um, it's more work for you to do, but your life is about to change. I want to pray for you and pray for our online audience that just tuned in. Father, thank you for this day. We appreciate you. We thank you for those who have just given their life over to Christ. Thank you for the word that we received today. I pray for transformation. I pray for continued revelation, wisdom, and knowledge to be our portion. Father, I pray for protection over our mind, the things in which we learn about you, that we can grow um, in your grace and in your word. So we thank you for this opportunity uh, of learning and fellowship, and we just love you and honor you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Greetings, I'm Pastor Lachey at Grace for the Nations Church in the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan, but reaching the world wide. We wanna invite you to be a part of a special service that we're having on Father's Day here at Grace for the Nations Church. If you're anywhere in the vicinity, we want you to join us at one o'clock for our worship experience. But earlier that day at 10 o'clock, we have a special service that will be aired online. And just all day long, we're gonna be celebrating men and the valor of men of God. We've dedicated the entire month of June to 
looking at men of the word, both in the Bible as well as men who live their lives accordingly. So we want to invite you to come and be a part of that, whether you are a man or not. Listen, women, you're welcome to join us as well. But on Father's Day, all men of all ages are going to be here. We're going to dress in our black suits and we're going to show up so that we can make a profound and a prolific statement of where we are as the men of God. God asked the question of Adam, Adam, where are you? So our men have curated a service. You'll have um, an opportunity to experience a men's choir that day. And we're just gonna be doing some special things to acknowledge some men and to give some deference to the fact that there are male factors in the body of Christ that go oftentimes unheard. So we invite you to come out, be a part of our Men's Day celebration, our Father's Day celebration and salute. We are restoring our role in the kingdom as men of God. Join us here at Grace for the Nation Church. And that concludes our live streaming service here at Grace for the Nations Church, but it doesn't have to stop your connection with us. If you're interested in finding out more about Grace for the Nations Church, visit our website at www.gftnc.org. But we also invite you to come and visit us in person. We have service here every Sunday at one o'clock, and you are sure to be blessed by the experience that takes place at Grace for the Nations Church. We're in Grand Rapids, Michigan, but we also serve a community worldwide. So stay tuned, tune in on all of our social media platforms, and remember that at Grace, it's our endeavor to reach the diverse people of the world by teaching biblical principles and life application of scripture. Despite the present day challenges that face individuals, families, and our communities, we believe there is hope. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you for our friends who've gathered with us electronically and on social media and our other platforms. We ask that you would touch, bless, and minister to them even as we go about our daily tasks in this world. We ask the grace of God to be upon them in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless.